We are live. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm still under the weather, so please forgive me if my voice still sounds a little crazy. Happy hump day. I don't know if you guys know, I was a philosophy major. I'm not sure if I've ever discussed that before. And then uh, there was only 13 of us on campus. So that was pretty cool. And I really loved what I did. Shout out to Dr. Gaffney. He, he turned me into the, turned me onto that whole world of thought and arguing and logic. And it was pretty, pretty it was pretty cool because I go to class and I wouldn't read and I'd still be able to be involved because it was just like a matter of arguing your 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 opinion, I guess we can say. But take a look at this real quick. Plato said, to be sure I must, and if, uh, to be sure I must, kind of sounds like a little like uh, Yoda, right? Uh, to be sure I therefore, I may assume that your silence gives consent. You guys have heard me say over and over and over again that... Silence is acceptance. Um, I've always believed that. Um, like I said, we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is What's in Your Cup, episode number 77? 76. Episode number 76. I'm going to have to retract that. This is episode number 76. So for 76 weeks in a row, we've done this show, and we've aired a show every Wednesday at 7 a.m. And you've often heard me say that, right? We talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly, and we don't seek controversy. Now, obviously, it often falls in my lap or my DM. Um, but if you're silent about it, you're accepting it. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Silence is acceptance. Uh, our guest today was actually on a show before. I'll bring him out and then I'll tell you guys a little bit more of uh, the story. But before we move on, don't be a creep. Smash subscribe and hit the like. All right, don't be a creep. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Uh, it's this is this is too early. This is too early, man. Well, listen. You asked me if it was at six a.m. Eastern time, so. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I did. I did. That would have been even earlier. That's that's one of those that's one of those uncomfortable times for me where, and I can't decide if you know, do you want to stay up, you know, take a nap, stay up, or do you want to go to sleep at your normal time and then wake up? Because I usually don't wake up for another like three hours roll out of bed three hours from now oh that's the good life well let's see i think i think i went down at like three so yeah sleep is not something i do often um well you know the, i thought this cup it was actually coincidental my my son and i actually started watching different strokes i'm i'm into this whole 80s thing with my my 10 year old son samson oh wow so it's like I saw the mug and I had to get the mug. And then I thought, wow, how fitting is it for this episode? Different strokes, right? For different folks. And what you're talking about, Willis? Because um, it just seems like we're having more and more of these what you're talking about, Willis moments. Good morning to everybody. Happy hump day, guys. I'm glad you are here bright and early. We are with Elijah. If you did not see Elijah on the previous episode, it's in the video description below. And I also included a video that he recently did in the video description where he's debunking myths 
And it's kind of what inspired me to have him on the show today. So thank you for joining me and thank you for joining on, on late notice. Yeah. I mean, I mean, thanks for having me again and, and, and thanks for watching, you know, that, uh, that video almost didn't actually happen. That was, um, that was supposed to be a completely different topic, but, uh, yeah, I, you know, one of these days I'll, I'll stop making Nido videos. I'll, I will stop making Nido videos. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to be for a while, but one of these days. I, I don't see that happening. I mean, certain things just end up falling in our laps and we end up owning them, you know, so uh, I, I don't think that'll happen. What I do think, though, is that more people should be following your channel. Um, you don't have a lot of content on your channel, but the content that you do have is pretty good. And again, like I said, it's uh, the way you present it, 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 it's, it, it makes for, for really good content and it's, it's easy uh, to watch. So, you know, keep at it. One of the things, um, or speaking of, of easy to watch or easy to listen to, and I believe they're connected with this whole scenario um, and everything that's going on uh, for this show, I was informed about the Holdback Rack podcast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um. So so I was on there before, and uh, I caused a whole bunch of trouble. I'm not sure if I can go back there, but uh, no, I'm only kidding. Um, no, actually, I'm not. I'm not kidding. But but anyway, uh, the I, I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go and see uh, see see that. Or listen yeah. to that episode. Yeah, I have, I upset some people. Um, they they had they had to pull it down. They edited it and they put it back up. I mean, and, and for reasons that were probably valid, you know. But uh, but yeah, that's um, that's me, right? Um, I mean, it wasn't anything. I don't think it was anything too bad. There's nothing in there that I would have edited out. But uh, but yeah, some people got a little bit upset. Um, they just had Chris Eaton on there. I think I think their last episode had Chris Eaton on there, and um, that was a uh, interesting. It was a, it was a pretty oh it's an interesting conversation to say the least. Well, uh, somebody somebody um, had told me that they had heard I was mentioned on the podcast and that I've been mentioned a few times and I wasn't familiar with the podcast. Um, and then when I asked them what episode, you know, you don't want to go searching through everything, and I wanted to hear how bad was I bashed because usually uh, that's the case. Um, I I uh, it was the Bob Clark saga episode which uh as you guys know um i did the first live with sydney uh discussing her situation with bob clark and and what took place there which was kind of uh crushing and that that's that's for the thumbnail where uh you know first uh, i did the episode with bob clark which connected me with you and um then you and i did an episode regarding your situation with nerd and um, actually, I was connected with uh, the person, uh, Kayla, who, who also said that you had told her about me. And she had reached out a few times. She reached out a few weeks back after I did the show with Sydney and um, had shared some of her story. It just wasn't the right time for me. So actually, it's, it's funny. I have some... I have some uh, let me just post something here real quick. I have some pictures. She was supposed to be on the show today. Um, that's how this originally started. She was supposed to be on the show because uh, she wanted to tell her story. She wanted to show her her proof um, regarding her getting snakes from Mutation Creation Canada with the NIDO virus. Um, she has a post on Facebook. Uh, she um, has quite quite a following, and that's actually what your your video was recently. Where, thank you for for it. I want to tell you that right now. It, was, it reminded me of a uh, Cliff Notes. It was like a Cliff Note video. Right. Yeah. 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 I definitely I definitely edited that a few times. Um, that was only supposed to be like a, a twenty minute video, and I think I ended up over the fifty minute mark. So that was kind of a that's kind of disappointing, but, uh, but yeah, I don't think I could have done it any shorter than that. You know, there, there's a couple parts I could have edited out, but, but I, I think, uh, I don't know. I'm pretty proud of it the way that it stands, you know? Um, I think it was, I think, uh, you had some strong opinions and again, the link is, is down below. We're going to talk a little bit about it. 
but I just want to thank you because I find it difficult for me to watch that show. And you you got to the part that I needed to right. see. And, and it wasn't just your opinion. You had the video clips there uh, to refer to. Um, let me see. Let's just see. So this is why, guys, um, Kayla, who is the owner of Jube Jube to Snape, did not join us. Or actually, this is, uh, I'll take us off here. Were you able to see the screen? Uh, yeah, I was. Okay, so that's how this this started. She reached out to me, and she wanted to have this uh, Q and A. <sighs> and again, um, it's a topic that you, you kind of have to roll up your sleeves and be ready to scrap. Um, she refers to minions and others, and we all know that there's backlash when you mention certain people's names and obviously billy billy with his following is one of those people but then she too had test and um and for those of you that are are not watching and listening uh if you get a chance go back we put up screenshots of the dm conversation that i had with uh kayla just asking her um pretty much to just send me whatever proof she did have. But in the in that DM, and this is before um, I had seen your video, she had mentioned that, uh, Lord, Lord, well, I call him Lion, Lord Lion uh, admitted to having six snakes. Um, so it was kind of weird where all you hear in the interview is that there's no six snakes and but then he's saying there's like six six snakes out of there's only six about six uh it's not easy to say six six right snakes uh there's only about six 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 snakes out of 400 adult females um and you know, that they're medicated and they're treated and uh, et cetera. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Because um, you went on to say some something that I wasn't aware of because I, I, I don't really follow the whole Billy thing. I stopped a long, long time ago. Um, the rant kind of just got, it seemed like it was, uh, it was being pushed now. It wasn't natural for me, always finding a reason to rant and, um, just uh there was something that he did kind of uh abusing someone with mental issues where the entire community uh went 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 at this person with mental issues so it's kind of like for me things happen and i understand that how you handle it is is what matters most so that's kind of like why where i just pulled away with that whole thing but Let's let's talk about a little bit about your video and a little bit about the topics that that you hit on, and then I'll come back and I'll explain why uh, Kayla wanted to reschedule today's um, interview. Yeah, so so I, I think one of the the pervasive, and the, so we we spoke about this in the video too. One of the pervasive myths is that if you have nidovirus, you'll know, and I, I wish that was the case. 
because if 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 it was if it was actually true that you know all of a sudden you'll lose your entire collection if you have one single snake in there that has not a virus because if that was the case then it would just burn itself out and you would not hear about it again we wouldn't be trying to figure out who has what six snakes or anything like that because you know everybody that ever had it all their snakes would be dead and this that it doesn't work it doesn't it, it doesn't work like that at all you know, there, there's a great paper out there. Um, there's a link to it in the in the video uh, that you know that a lot of people work together to to do you know this study. I think it was first a year and then went up to to 20 months. So that's just over a year and a half, right? And uh, they studied these snakes that had this virus, and you know they saw levels of morbidity up to 75 percent. But if 75 percent are dying, that still means that 25 percent are not. So in the in the case of the snakes that I got from Nerd, we'll use that as an example. Um, out of those five snakes, three probably you know had some serious, very serious disease. Obvi it was very obvious disease, uh, but there were two that you I you know you can't really tell the difference. And then there's also a snake that I talk about that was she was gnarly. She was the oldest snake I've ever seen. She, probably some sort of import brought over. I mean, probably in like the 90s or something like that. She was old when I got her. And uh, she was the last ball python that I kept um, when I was moving from Florida. And uh, she dies. And, you know, we went ahead and got a necropsy done just because she was she was old and, and weird. And uh, we were told, you know, she had nidovirus. That snake had never I mean, she had maybe, a, you know, kind of a rest thing going on every couple of years. And then that was nothing that, you know, everybody kind of says, just don't think about it. You know, ball pythons get get these things. Um, you know, nidovirus was something people would say that GTP's got or, or maybe carpet's got or something like that. And it wasn't anything to worry about. And, uh, you know, over the years, though, we, we, we have all this research that, you know, 2014 was, was a huge one where, you know, they, they said, even though we know there's some sort of contagious disease affecting these snakes as early as like the 1990s. So, I mean, the 1990s is when they said there's something contagious with these snakes. And it took us all the way up to 2014 for that to be, you know, isolated. We could test for it, you know, et, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so, so that's that's how far back it goes. And if you look at things like Arena, we've known about that for a lot longer. I want to say that was 50s or 60s, but I, you know, Arena is is we've we've definitely known about that for a very long time. And then of course, Cryptosporidium. You know, there there are um, some Cryptosporidium affects mammals and humans. So we've definitely known about Cryptosporidium for a long time. So we've known about all of these things and, and you know, we, we, we still to this day, all the way in 2022, in some instances, 60 plus years later, you know, in the case of nidovirus, 30 plus years later, uh, if you're counting from 2014, eight years later, um, we, we know that there's 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 something going on with these animals, but we we still allow people to do things like, you know, go to the big box chain store and buy a leopard gecko and the things, you know, stomach swells up and it stops eating and it looks like, you know, it starves to death. And then what does everybody say? You didn't have a UV lamp or you didn't have the right bedding or obviously the cocoa killed it or something like that. But ultimately, this is that was probably crypto. You know, there's there's plenty of videos out there explaining crypto. Um, on leopard geckos, it's pretty devastating. And, you know, a lot of leopard ge geckos carry that. Uh, you've got, you know, a great resource of Zach Lofman that talks about false water cobras that he had an outbreak of crypto. Uh, and he didn't know, you know, because they were, you know, they, they don't explode when they have crypto. So those snakes came in sick with crypto, spread it to other snakes, transferred it to other snakes, you know, and he had to go through and, and, and separate them all out and try to figure out who has crypto and who doesn't. And so in, in both of those cases, whether it's leopard geckos or whether it's the false water cobras that Dr. Zach Lofman uh, was was working with, then, you know, it, it, it's it's not these animals don't turn blue. They don't change colors. You know, it's not obvious when you have something like this going through your collection. And, and you know, in, in the year 2022, you know, in the 21st century, we've got all these modern tools that are just becoming cheaper by the day to do things like molecularly look for cryptosporidium. No more, you know, trying to collect poo on a slide and, and, and getting a microscope. We can actually test for it molecularly. Uh, we can do the same thing, you know, for nidovirus and arena virus. We can do the same thing for, um, I always mess up the way you say this, um, adenovi ad adenovirus, whatever it is, ADV for bearded dragons. I don't know. I always mess up how you say it. I can't put those words together. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we've got all of this stuff that, that we can do to detect these diseases. And the thing is, is that, you know, if you look at other animal hobbies, 
people are already doing this. You know, we've got parvo and dogs is something that I mentioned. And and, and uh, my I lost a I lost a litter in the uh, late nineties um, to parvo virus, and and it was traumatizing. Yeah, I mean it's it's awful. I mean what they. I mean, well, we don't want to talk about what happens to those poor dogs, but yeah, that's that's absolutely it's terrible. And then you'll you'll never know where you got it from. Like you might. Be I knew to... where I got it from. That was that yeah. was the that was the uh, bad part. Um, I had a neighbor who had a litter at the same time. I had Rottweilers. He had uh, pit bulls, and for some reason, the pit bull. I mean, it, you know, I have two of them now, and they are considered the super breed. Um, they handle uh parvo extremely well all things considered um and i went and i looked at his litter and it's airborne and i brought it home and yeah. um you know his dog survived and my rottweilers died you know and and it was one of the most trauma i mean i'm i'm getting emotional over now and this is over 20 years ago it was just one of the most right. traumatizing experiences ever um because the, you 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 witness it and there's nothing you can do. It, it was just horrible. It was, yeah. it was just a horrible experience. And and um, I guess the difference between the dogs and and the snakes is we don't hear the snakes. We don't see what they're going through. Um, but they're going through it. Okay. Right. I want to shout out Forward Motion Reptiles. Thank you so much. Uh, keep moving forward. I got my Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I'm drinking Bustelo. I know. My man Pineapple knows what I'm talking about because he gets his Bustelo in the morning. He gets his fix as well. Good morning to everybody that's joining us. I see uh, I see. we already have people not enjoying like, Jar Pythons. I know you're very uh, connected to Billy, and this is a topic that you, you're most likely not comfortable with. Um, I see we're talking about facts. Well, I guess that's what we're trying to figure out. And, and what is considered facts? I think that that that's my question, and I know when I interviewed you and when I interviewed Sydney, I, I guess what I wanted to know is how do we get the facts? How do we get the facts? Having having the testing is one thing, but how do we know whose animal was tested? How do we get these facts? That's definitely uh, you know a point that gets brought up a lot. Um, I think so. So and and just just to be clear, you know, I'm, I'm I. Not here to to kill evil Billy or anything like that because I know everybody in the reptile hobby. I'll, yeah, I see. I see Mac in the comments saying, "Who's getting bashed today?" Just, yeah. Again, it's not about bashing people, guys. It, it, it's about discussion. We we don't have to agree. Um, we're adults. Um, right. There's a lot of things that we don't agree on, but there's something. There's certain things um, that that's not a topic for for uh, opinion, and those are test results um science okay there, there, there are certain things when it's opinion versus science and what i've seen so far in the responses and i use your video and, and the video clips you have of that mj uh interview is um there's no science if i were being accused of of certain things and i was being accused with science as a part of what's being considered the facts against me right if we were in a court of law we're looking for the facts right okay. and they would bring science they would bring expert witnesses okay so if i have expert witnesses and i have laboratory results um that can be directly associated to my animals i would want science to rebut that and we haven't seen any science on any of the people that have been accused. And until they are proven, um, it, it, it is a iffy world, right? It's all about opinions and opinions are like buttholes. Everybody has one, right? Um, but we're getting science involved. And, and guys, it's 2022. There are certain things that you can't deny today. I mean, on, on the show I did with you, we, we were talking about the mini... Uh, what is it the the pcr test that's right so 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 you have science available at your house i've been ill for a few days i didn't go into a, a doctor's office i didn't go to a lab i i was i pulled a COVID test out of a cabinet and i did science okay to see that i didn't have COVID. i had to stick the swab up my own nose 
okay? But it was science. And what I haven't seen is any response with science. And that's what I'm looking for. I would want to clear up my name, especially when there's so much at risk there. Yeah, absolutely. So, so just a just a quick refresher. Um, when it when it comes to diseases, you know, whenever scientists decide that you know, hey, we, we suspect that there's a disease or or, or something going on here, uh, they'll attempt to isolate it. And one of the the cheapest, easiest, and and most reliable methods that we have for identifying things like viruses, pieces of DNA, is PCR tests. So, you know, the the very first time that there was a you know uh, when it any of these viruses, whether it's a human or not, the first thing that comes out is a PCR test and we try to find it. Uh, PCR tests are also used to try to find things like, um, you know, uh, you can see the the Ancestry.com and, and all that other fun stuff, you know, to find out if you're predisposed to have, you know, uh, um, heart defects or diabetes or something like that. There are services now that you can go get your cats and dogs and, you know, tell me how, how what percentage of Chihuahua this is. Uh, and if it's a cat, that's going to be really strange. But um, uh, yeah, you, so you've got all of these options, all of these tests, they're, they're, they're coming down. I was watching a video not too long ago um, where somebody was going through and cataloging mushrooms, taking DNA samples of those, and then catalog, cataloging the sequences for those mushrooms. So when it comes to things like, like, like PCR testing, like molecular testing and genetics and studying genetics, everything has just gotten cheaper and cheaper and cheaper you know there's there's you can jump on netflix there's a, a movie called unnatural selection i think is what it's called it's a documentary of these people that are that are doing you know these experiments at home they're able to to get these sequences and uh um you know modify dna there's uh you know i, I believe his name is david ishi or something like that is is doing experiments on dogs um you know we're, we're pretty far from doing experiments on snakes i'm sure but uh you know, dogs are a little bit different in the way that they reproduce, but we're not going to get into that a little bit graphic, right? But uh, yeah, you can go catch this on Netflix right now. And this is something you can do at home. When it comes to humans, of course, you know, we've got so much data and so much money that we go from having a PCR test to having an antibody test, you know, pretty quick. It's, it's very fast. And the difference being is that PCR just tells you whether or not, you know, the, the reaction happened, whether or not something in there matched up uh, to what you were looking for. Uh, but an antibody test, you know, confirms that there's some there's something, you know, that that uh, that your body's reacting to. So you you were definitely infected. Right. So technically, you know, if you wanted to say that, you know, a dead virus could set off a PCR test, that's absolutely true. You know, a dead virus could set off a PCR test. That would be a false positive. But the, the chances of that, I mean, would be why would you have dead virus rubbing rubbed all over one of your snakes when the day that you went to test it like it just doesn't really it seems kind of you know right it's like trace it's evidence like, uh you know forensics and there has to be certain amounts but it, it, it can, right. can be present it could have been in the vehicle you followed etc so uh troy from bulls and strikes python says there's only one way to ensure the health of your collection quarantine every snake you take in and get them all tested before introducing them to your collection I know one of the things that I always mention is that you cannot um, you cannot ever underestimate the importance of quarantining your animals. I think the issue is here is that there's no standard. I mean, we do 90 days. Um, I mean, there's certain things that won't show in 90 days, even in 90 days, they won't show. I've heard of some breeders that are doing a full year of quarantine. How many quarantine stations can you can you have? You have to look at it this way. Every animal you introduce to a quarantine station, you are now resetting the clock. Um, so there's just so many factors. But at minimum, there has to be some some attempt attempt at quarantining. I see comments, uh, Angie, assuming is very dangerous and others that mention assuming or silence or responding to silence. So I, I think that that I 100% agree, assuming, um, if you remember the odd couple in the episode that Felix says, when you assume you make an ass out of you, M-E, right? So, so I agree with you on that. But when someone makes such... I would say grave accusation, right? Assuming goes both ways. It's a two-way street. 
So to assume that a person's accusations aren't true is very dangerous as well. It's actually more dangerous if you think about it, okay? Because it's putting people's animals and collections at risk, okay? So, so I agree 100%. Assuming is very dangerous, but I don't think that we're looking that the assumption goes both ways. And that's why we need facts. Now, someone said in the comments, and I thought that was a really good uh, response, that one of the ways um, to, to get this ball rolling is to test those six animals. Yeah, that's, um, I mean, that, that, that seems like the most direct path to me. That's one of the reasons that, that I highlighted that, is that if you, if you have animals, that seem to already be showing some sort of disease. And and, and just for the sake of, of conversation, let, let's make sure that we understand that you, you have some sort of pathogen or some sort of agent. So a virus or, you know, something, bacteria, whatever it is, right? And so that, we don't see that. We don't see that virus, right? What we see is the symptoms of that virus, right? So when you get a cold, the cold isn't a runny nose. The cold is the virus that's running through your body, right? And, uh, so when we see disease in snakes, you know, not all respiratory infections are NIDO, right? And, and NIDO doesn't always give a respiratory infection. You know, as, as mentioned, there's a paper that you can go check out 25% of those animals, you know, within the, the time of that study didn't seem to be showing any disease. Uh, the snakes that, that I got from NERD, there was one that didn't show any disease. There's a um, YouTuber out there. Uh, I believe it's like Gotta Love Carpets or something like that. She has carpet pythons down in Australia. And she's got a snake that, you know, maybe once a year throws a respiratory infection and that's it. So, so being able to see NIDO virus, you can't do that. It, it seems easy enough that, you know, somebody like Billy would engage with somebody like, you know, the University of Guelph, uh, who has recently started offering tests for things like NIDO and, and, and snakes, right? And, and, course, I, and I appreciate you mentioning that because I would never have been able to pronounce the name by the spelling. <laughs> I messed it up so many times. I was like, is this golf or, or is it, there's an elf or what is this? I don't <laughs> yeah. know. How to say this. So, yeah. so I appreciate that. We have a question here from John and he asks, here's a question though, Brian, and I have no tie to Billy nerd or anyone else. Why is it that the breeders are guilty until proven innocent? Why isn't that they have to prove that they didn't send a, say, a sick animal? Um, this is America. And, and in America, I don't know if you ever watched the criminal system, uh, but most people have to prove their, their innocence, although it says that your innocence will prove guilty, right? You go to court to prove your, your innocence. That's, that, that's what, what you go there for. That's number one. Number two, this is an industry. The people that are making these accusations are clients, they're customers. And, and they're saying that there's a problem with the product they purchased from you. The issue is that the product is a living being. It's, a, it, it's, it's something that breathes. It's something that dies. And when it dies, that creates a whole big issue. It's not such an easy fix. We're not going to raise it from the dead. Okay. And again, if my livelihood were based off of my reputation, I'm going to want to do everything to say that, not, that that didn't happen from me. Okay. I'm going to do everything to show that those animals that I have here, that are sick, that I'm treating with medication. I'm gonna show that they were tested. I'm gonna show that I'm treating them with the proper medication, that I'm not just using the same medication for every illness, assuming that every bacteria, every virus is the same. So, so we have to look at that and look at the subject matter. We're dealing, we're dealing with animals. So yes, I think that if your livelihood um relied on your reputation that you would want to i had someone and they're often on my uh, uh on these shows and, and attending the shows and i'll never forget that they had an issue with their with their uh they had an issue with their um animal that i sold them not eating now now mind you that animal had the biggest appetite while here. I didn't get defensive. The first thing I did was I asked them a series of questions regarding husbandry. I let them know what we did here. I walked them through the process. 
The animal got back on food and has been eating like a savage since. Okay. But to get defensive and say, well, your animal's not eating, it's your fault, it, it doesn't help anyone. We should be seeking resolution. Okay. That, that should be the goal. And I think what we're losing sight of here, everyone, is this is a customer, a client. How you handle that. Every one of my businesses, I promise you, they say that the customer is always right. And I say that's bullshit. Okay. That's bullshit. I've been that wrong customer. I've been that wrong customer that goes home and finds whatever I thought was missing from the package and ranted and raved about how it was, it was, it, it, I couldn't complete it and get it done when I needed it done. And it was my fault because a bag of screws fell under the couch or whatever the case. I've been that wrong customer. Okay, but how you handle adversity, adversity, how you handle these situations is what's key. And we can't have this mob mentality. I hate bullies. I hate bullies. I am from the South Bronx. You will not bully me. You might beat my ass. You will not bully me, though. I promise you that. Okay, I can't stand bullies. We talk about this word community all the time. And this community likes to make people outcasts for not going with the flow. No, when you have one thought process and everybody wants to do things the same way, that's a cult mentality. I won't go to, I won't belong to any cult. I don't care how many followers you have. As a matter of fact, I think you mentioned that in your video as well, is why when people say, how come no one else has mentioned, but then there's fear of retribution. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and that's exactly what happens. So so I and, and just to be clear, I don't hate Billy. I don't hate Bob Clark. I don't hate Kevin McCurley, you know, and a lot of these, 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 especially talking about, you know, those three, you know, Kevin McCurley is responsible for a, a lot of the industry, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, what's that thing with Genghis Khan, apparently everybody or a large number of people are related to Genghis Khan just because he was everywhere. So Kevin McCurley, Genghis Khan of reptiles, right? There's some of my animals are probably related to Kevin McCurley animals. They're just everywhere, right? Um, Billy really produces some really great stuff. You know, he's got this little weirdo and tri-stripe and all that stuff that he's emerging up there. Um, definitely helps a lot of people out. And then, of course, Bob Clark. Like, I, I can't even begin to, to start talking about Bob Clark because it's just such a history that that he's been involved, you know, in, in, in this hobby, you know? But what, what we see is, you know, when I came out and said, you know, hey, you know, I... Um, or, and this was even before, you know, I told anybody that it was, that it was nerd, you know, when I was talking to nerd, I said, Hey, I have this, this thing from a veterinarian. I have this, you know, thing from a lab, you know, this snake has nidovirus and, you know, they, they, they turned around and said, you know, well, you don't know how to take care of snakes. Can you imagine just for a moment, like if you go and buy an iPhone and the thing doesn't work and then somebody looks at you and says, well, you obviously don't know C plus plus or Swift or how to solder what's wrong with you. Go back, spend two years learning how to solder, and then we'll consider taking back your iPhone. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That's ridiculous. So that's what happened to me with Nerd. If you go look and see what happens with Sydney, you know, the first thing that happened is there's a mob mentality of you don't know how to take care of snakes. This is your first snake. You don't know what you're doing. Your vet doesn't know what they're doing. You know, the only people that know what they're doing are people on Facebook that have no degrees and, you know, all this other stuff, right? And then, of course, the exact same thing happened to Kayla when she came out and said, you know, hey, you know, I have a concern with my snakes. What do I do? All she did was, you know, have these bullies show up and say, well, obviously, you don't know how to take care of snakes. Right. So what we're seeing is it's not it's absolutely not that the breeders are are, you know, guilty until proven innocent. What we're seeing is people that are saying, hey, I literally have a test signed by a veterinarian. And then those people are guilty. The, you, you know, they're being told you don't know what you're doing, right? I mean, just imagine, just imagine for a moment, you go and you buy a brand new car and the thing, you know, uh, stops running right out of the, out of the lot. You know, would you expect Elon Musk to show up and be like, how dare you, you insult me? Uh, you need to go and get five years of experience in this hobby before I can consider returning in your Tesla. That's Correct. crazy. It's crazy. Right. right. You, you haven't driven in the Daytona 500. So exactly. You, you have. Did you change the color of your nails again? Are you matching again? I yeah, but it doesn't match on the camera. <laughs> you you are a special individual. It matches in person, I swear. It also matches with my my cup. <laughs> okay, I see. All three I, I see. I see what you're doing there. So Alice uh, Kavanaugh says, "Nido testing in Canada is not very accessible. I know for a test, it's 119 dollars 
just for one snake. I believe in the States, it's pretty inexpensive. It's not that inexpensive with testing, et cetera, here in the States. I just think that some people have a different uh, opinion. Um, and I know for a fact, at least in the Sydney uh, situation, there were people willing to pay to have Bob Clark's uh, snakes tested. And now there are more options um, happening in, in Canada as well. Um, and then if you look at um, whose response is that, uh, John Sprefera, who says, but Alice, isn't it isn't $119 worth it rather than losing your whole collection? Especially if you're someone like John Sprefera that has snakes that cost $15,000 each. Yeah, John, I'm throwing your business out there. Um, but, but, but think about that. I mean, if we, we, we live in the age of of uh social media right now it's seven o'clock we started at seven in the morning we have over 50 people bright and early sharing this cup of coffee with us having this by the end of this video a few hundred people will have seen this video if only 10 percent of those people will never buy off of you again just think about it that way wasn't that 119 dollars worth it to save your reputation to dispute to demiss to to demystify these accusations. So you can't be penny wise and dollar dumb is what I'm trying to say. And, and we see that too often in, in this industry. And I'm going to say industry, not community. Uh, Balls and Strike says, for the record, I heard of a few big breeders selling sick animals before it became public knowledge. You do, you do hear rumors of it all the time. This is a first with MC. I'm not saying the accusation is untrue. I'm saying it's a first. It's not the first um, I hear about sick animals, um, people visiting his site. But then again, that was mentioned on the on the MC um, interview where there was admission of sick animals. And guys, it is impossible. So we're clear. It is impossible to have such a large collection and not have sick animals. It is impossible. If you have children, okay, when you're children, I, I, I'll never forget when Samson started going to school and I told my wife, now we're going to be around a cesspool of germs, okay? He's going to be coming home and these little kids are picking their boogers and not washing their hands and hand to mouth all day. And, and this is 10 years ago. This is pre-COVID, you know? So it's impossible to have such a large collection. And we're not talking about you know, I have a hundred, we have a hundred snakes here. We're not talking about a hundred snakes. We're talking about thousands. And in within the thousands, you have separate collections, right? Austin has his own collection that he brought back to the facility. So it's impossible to not have sick animals, what you do and how you handle it. And I heard you mention something I never heard of where he puts sick animals in the freezer uh yeah yeah so that was um that was something that was that was talked about uh you know again kind of kind of the loop back is is pretty much the moment that that kayla you know uh, made that facebook post there was a uh, a zoom meeting for all patreons and uh of course you know so uh, so i'm a patreon for for, for billy um and uh uh, I actually bought a, a snake from Billy for a friend of mine, uh, and that snake is fine too. And that, that's the other thing is that you know, so so I bought a snake for a friend, and that snake is totally fine. So that means that every all two thousand snakes at Billy's facility are totally fine. Well, yeah, I mean, no, that's that's not. We can't assume that, right? And then of course the inverse is 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 true too. So if Kayla bought one snake and it's sick, that doesn't mean all two thousand are sick. You know, these are animals. We're working with animals. You know. Uh, but, um, yeah, that was, that was, uh, that was something that we heard. Was Not that. only that, one of the things that I really gave you kudos for, um, and I've experienced it. I mean, I mean, I've done the RI with the Reptifogger and, and, you know, my own treatment and, and I've treated, uh, scale rod and, and I used to take in, you know, the, the bargain basement animals, you know, that you get for right. such a great deal. And then you realize it wasn't a great deal when you look at the amount of time and hours invested in, in getting the animal back to health. Right. Uh, the issues that you didn't know the animal had. But but you're absolutely right. There are animals that that I know of. I mean, I know someone that he dries out the animals when they have R.I. He'll give them water for 15 minutes a day. He'll, he'll yeah. leave a bowl there. He'll dry it out and he'll let time take its course. 
more i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put this out as a a, a recommendation but a lot of the animals will make it through it just like us right everybody doesn't go to the doctor when when they get a cold everybody doesn't go and get anti antibiotics we let our, our our immune system kick in so different animals react different ways just because um one person's animal dies it does not mean that the other animals that haven't been detected don't have night nido virus in that same argument it doesn't mean that they do and that's where testing becomes important you have six animals that you're admitting are ill for one reason or another to the point of being medicated test those six animals yeah, for sure. And, and you know, know everyone that you have nothing to worry about because one of the things I will admit, no matter what what uh, differences um, we may have and what I may like or not like about MCC, one of the things I would say is that they're 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 pretty anal about their processes um, there, and I'm, and and it doesn't benefit them to not have a clean uh, facility and to have quarantining measures and to be washing their hands. But we've all seen videos where we go tub to tub, no hand washing, no sanitizing, et cetera. And that's where it starts, right? Where I've seen it with the smaller breeders on my shows. And when they show an animal, um, they'll go and shameless plug every Thursday, guys. We we do Bowling with Brian, where we show uh, somebody's collection and parts of their collection. And you'll see them sanitizing their hands, going from one animal to another. OK, you, you, you want to take preventive measures. Forward Motion Reptile says the problem runs much deeper in the upper echelon of ball python breeders. There's lots of underground hush money shh, being sent and or sent as tax write offs. Reagan Renee says, how long was the snake in her possession? Very good question. Very legitimate. A typical says. Who made the claim against MCC? I'll tell you this. My dog's chewed up, so I had to go get another one. Um, we always uh, discuss it on um, on Friday. I always pose the question, KY, or uh, I had to go get more KY jelly for probing, guys. Um, so I will say the person rhymes with lube lube, okay? <laughs> um, it's uh, jube jube the snake, okay? Um and she has a way of doing things. And, and I tell people all the time, just because you do something or someone does something different doesn't mean it's wrong. Now, the Friday show I do um, with, with uh, Canadian Reptile Adventures, another Canadian who gives Canada a bad name, the, uh, the show that I do with him, we, we show best practices, but we also get different breeders with experience to share their best practices. And for me, it, it's it's not specifically the process. It's the desired end result. So she does things differently that I don't 100% agree with. I'm not into taking snakes out. I'm, I'm not into the letting the snakes play in the grass. There's just so many other things. Uh, stress kills snakes. These animals can live 20, 30 years. When your snake is dying three, four, five years after you purchased it, and you've done so many things that are contrary to what we know works, there's a big possibility there were stress factors in there, okay, that led to your animal dying. It didn't just die. It does happen once in a while, but it doesn't happen all the time. And then when you look at that, right, oops, when we look at a uh, husbandry, when we look at um, unnecessary induced stress on these animals. These animals ball up and stay in their hide for a reason. They're looking out for predators. For 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 ball python guys, their their brain is is beyond simple, and it's kind of like prey or predator. Okay, that's that's kind of like their thought process, and they like hides that have one way in, one way out, because they can actually watch prey sometimes walking by, and they're able to look for predators. We have them out and about on a beautiful sunny day. They're stressed. They're worried about birds flying around, right? You know, birds eat snakes, okay? Um, there's the whole argument about mites. So again, I don't totally agree with how she does things. She uses large enclosures, but she 
she has the enrichment going on with multiple hides, etc. For me, if you can obtain the desired husbandry results, if you have proper temperatures, if you have proper humidity, having tanks, having large enclosures, it's more work to obtain that desired goal. But if you're able to obtain that desired goal, more power to you, okay? It's just a different way of doing things. How long did she have the animal before it was tested? Well, I think that's something that we have to look at. And, and that's one of the reasons that the topic came up and we were calling it the Samson Clause, where if you get an animal, if you sell animals, you should offer 100% refund if that animal is tested within 48 hours and it comes back with nidovirus. It, it could be asymptomatic and you had never seen it. You don't yeah. know, okay? Um, so we started having that conversation and people started changing their morph markets, offering a 100% refund, okay? But that's on you. Are you willing to pay that $100 a test, right? The price of your animal just went up, okay? Um, and, and it has to be a window and it has to be quality control measures in place because then we have to worry well, did you test a $100 animal that had it and I sold you a $4,000 animal? That's what we have to figure out is the, the, the quality control there. So um, did I say zoop, zoop, joop, joop? It was joop, joop. Yes, yes. Um, drop time reptiles making me laugh over here. Do like my abuelita said, put some VIX on it. For those of you that don't know what abuelita is, that's a grandma or it's actually a, a endearing way of saying grandma, it's actually abuela. And um, for Latinos, VIX cures everything. I used to joke, it's not even funny with some of the diseases I would talk about and I would say, all you need is VIX and a, and a hot washcloth and that would, that would cure it for, for us Latinos. So. so real quick guys, I'm just gonna show you um, why we rescheduled, why we rescheduled the, uh, excuse me, we didn't reschedule because I'm I'm not going to move forward with it, but why Kayla didn't join us today. So that brings us back, if you notice why, um, and for me, I mean, if she's gonna speak about it, she, she, she's spoken about it um, on Facebook. I believe I have the link down below. Uh, she spoke about it uh, on her interview with Sydney. I think that's when she had first told me her story and asked to be on the show, which was a few weeks ago or maybe, maybe a month and a half ago. Um, and if she's gonna clear the air on MJ, I just don't see why we would, we would you know, revisit it again. Um, and the reason why I'm discussing it today, guys, is because I had already started doing these screenshots. I already put work and time into this, and I wasn't just going to just let it go poof, gone. Um, and again, for me right now, this isn't about right or wrong. This isn't about whether it's true or not. For me right now, it's about how you respond to these situations or accusations. Okay. And as you can see, in that MJ video, she, she mentions that her telling her side of the story is the same as a rape victim crying rape. That's sick. That brings us back to the mob mentality that, that, that we were talking about. That brings us back to you don't realize the power in your words and how people are going to take that. OK, that that that's sick. So I'm looking forward to hearing 
um, that there was some sort of resolution. And I'm hoping that she's not walking into an ambush on, on MJ. And you notice that she mentioned that uh, Pia was invited as well from Fishhead. So that way they can discuss the accuracy of the information that's being provided. What, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, so so I, I I have a lot of respect for Pia. You know, she's 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 the uh, however you want to say it, the OG at this point of of Nidovirus information. She's the one that so it was it was her outbreak that kind of kicked off a lot of uh, a lot of the 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 research and, and, and different things that they're doing. Uh, as far as I know, she still maintains a Nido collection. So Pia is involved. She's somebody that has you know how do you want to say it? like skin in the game or whatever. Um, you know, Pia Bartolini, uh, her husband is Cody Bartolini. They run the Reptile Preservation Institute, um, you know, involved with Fishhead Labs, really great people. Um, and yeah, they, they're, they're really interested in the animals. There, there are, of course, researchers that are a little bit more, you know, further away. So, so Mark Stengelein, hopefully I'm saying his name correctly, you know, uh, he's, he's in it just for the research. He, 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 I know, as far as I know, he doesn't actually own boas or, or pythons or anything like that. So, uh, so it's good to have somebody like Pia that's, that's, you know, in it. She wants, she wants beautiful green tree pythons. We want beautiful green tree pythons. Then, you know, let's, let's get the science and everything combined so that we can, we can make that happen. Um, so, so, you know what I find ironic about this whole situation? You, you, you notice there's the mention of, of lawyers and legal action. So I yeah. just find the irony here. Uh, isn't Billy Steam my channel, my content? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, a lot of the motivational stuff, I think he just recently posted something motivational. And again, if somebody wants to run back to Billy and say, I'm talking smack, that's fine. You can call me. I was just on the phone with him for like two hours yesterday or the day before or something. So after your video, he called you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. Did you, I mean, Did you get a rant? Uh, yeah, of course. Right. Uh, so, so, uh, kind of on a funny note. So I, I just call those passion flexes, right? That's, uh, passion. so you gotta, well, we're going to call rants passion, flex, passion, passion flexes. flexes. Yes. So my, uh, buddy of mine, um, actually is how I found out you posted the video. He posted up a video clip, um, uh, ball and hand pythons. And he posted up a screenshot of your video and talked about how people were going to get their, their butt all, uh, you know, their, their feathers uh, ruffled and there was going to be a lot of butt hurting going on because of your video. Um, and then he explained why he's no longer a Billy follower. And I got a lot of DMs, guys. I got a, you know, so for every one of you that, that, you know, think Billy is God, there are a lot of people that haven't had the best experiences and, and, and have left the cult. Okay. Um, and, and just for the record, Billy is one of the reasons I got into this whole social media thing. I mean, look at these stickers. I have thousands of stickers. And the first sticker collection I wanted was was uh, the Billy stickers. Now, mind you, there's not one of them up on the wall. And I think he'll be OK with that. I know he can't he can't piss on my sticker and flush it down the toilet because I never sent one. OK, um, unless one of you sends him my stickers. OK, so so there's a lot that that these people with influence do it's just that guys everybody's not always you know i think about the wrestling coach my wrestling coach that that it was discovered that uh he was touching a little bit too much um some of the wrestlers or or priest that i have given confessions to okay sometimes our heroes they're not what everything we think they are Okay, that's just that's just the reality of it. And again, this isn't a bash session. That's my opinion, my channel, my content. Okay, but I just find it ironic that we're so brazen and we're we're so badass. And as soon as there's a, a difference in opinion, we're threatening lawsuits. I just I don't see consistency there. And again, a lawyer will tell you anything. They want your money. Okay, a lawyer is going to cost more money than to test those six animals. Think about that. Yeah. I will pay a lawyer to shut you down. I'll pay a lawyer to, to get, get, get you in trouble, but I won't pay to have an animal tested to clear my name. Think about that. It's not an opinion. That is the fact of how this is being handled right now. That is the fact. This is not an opinion. The fact is, he will not change his ways, and he has been very boisterous about that. 
He will not give in to accusations. Again, there are, there are te test results, there are lab results. I don't know the control measures. I don't know if the animal could have gotten in elsewhere. Those results only tell me the animal had nidovirus. I, I don't know the chain of custody. I don't know everything that happened after that animal was received. That is why we have to start thinking about having measures in place. I get an animal, I'm sending it out, I'm getting test results within 48 hours. That kind of takes away a lot of the whole thought process if this did or didn't happen. Now, in your video clips, et cetera, MJ, again, and I find it funny because he wants to do the show because supposedly he's changing his position on this. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that's, I, I mean, I was really, um, and, and this again, I don't, I don't want to talk, I'm, I'm not talking smack about anybody, but uh, I guess I'll talk a little bit of smack, right? So that, so MJ's video really kind of upset me because it was, uh, it was one of those scenarios where, you know, uh, everybody keeps saying, well, what evidence, what evidence? I mean, she has no evidence and they kept saying no evidence, no evidence, no evidence other than all of the evidence that she has, right? So no got, evidence except the evidence. Right, exactly. So she, she has veterinary reports. She's, she's got, you know, um, tests from fish head labs, you know, she's gone and, and, and helped her friends use Guelph to, uh, to test their snakes. So, so this is one of those things where, where there, there was some physical evidence now, you know, questions like how long did you have the, Hey, hey, passion flex right there. The passion flexor. That is a new hashtag. The yes. passion flexor is here. Well, but, uh, yeah, she she has all that that stuff. Uh, and uh, this is also worth worth mentioning that um, uh, that so mutation creation got involved with. I want to say it was McGill University um, uh, that and they were doing studies on I believe it was piebald as a nonsensical mutation and, and, and ball pythons. I believe that's the study. So mutation creation has a massive amount of really great resources. Uh, you know, Billy's got got a ton of great information that he can share with a place like McGill so that we can do things like the ball python genetics project. That's something both both me and Brian here. You know, we the ball python genetics project. Hannah was here on Brian's show. I interviewed about, her first. Yeah, you did. You did. But I mean, I did it in my kitchen, though. I did it in my kitchen. So guys, just so you know, it's a little pissing contest I have with uh... Elijah, by the way, I also did it before you too, Passion Flexer. I interviewed her Friday, you interviewed her Monday. So I interviewed her first, just for the record, guys. That's true. It's true. Um, but yeah, so there, there's a ton of resources there. Um, and it's kind of worth mentioning that the same technology that we use, so PCR is used to detect nidovirus, and PCR is also used for us to do things like detect het lavender albino. So it's the same type of test. You know, it's the same technology that's being used. Uh, and I know a lot of people are really engaged with, you know, the testing for morphs. I am. I bought all the equipment. It cost me a couple grand to test for lavender albino uh, to get all that stuff set up. And uh, I'm really interested in it. Um, you know, obviously, Billy's done some work with it uh, at, at, in his work with with McGill University. But, yeah, it's the same test. So to hear people say stuff like, well, we can't trust PCR to find nidovirus, but you can trust it to find lavender albino. That doesn't, you know, the motivation there is to not look for nidovirus, right? And so that's what we need to change. You know, uh, facilities like Billy's are, are great opportunities for a place like Guelph to, to do something like, can we do environmental testing? Instead of testing all the snakes, can we just run a swab up and down the front of the rack? Like, is that, is that something that we can do? I don't know. That's a question for, for, for Guelph, you know? Uh, so, and at least so in that interview, I'm sorry to cut you off. In that interview, though, it was almost like, you know, MJ saying, and, oh, right. and, you know, and again, I, told, I already said it, guys. We just know what the test results say. We don't, I don't know what happened from point A to point B. I just know that that test says that the animal she got from MCC has nidovirus. I don't know how it happened. And, and Billy, I, I, I've said it over and over again benefits you to to test those sick animals and let everybody know yeah they're sick but it's not nidovirus um we don't know what it says but mj goes on to say well you better not or you better know what you're doing because you go up against billy and and they're you know you're gonna get shit and and they're gonna run you out and and we've seen that the mob mentality 
Okay, we have seen that where if you speak up, and again, I saw a comment, get your ducks in a row because you do have to be prepared and it takes a lot. So when you say, how come we haven't, and this goes on to the Bob Clark situation, this goes on to nerd, how come we haven't seen others speak up? This is the exact reason that you that people don't want to speak up. They, they, go ahead, because they don't want to be attacked. Okay, they don't want to be attacked. And we talked, and, and MJ spoke about an army. So I found this funny. Um, and, and MJ spoke about an army, but let me tell you guys, do not sleep on Jube Jube. Jube Jube has an army. Okay, I pulled up the last 10 posts and looked at the amount of likes, looked at the amount of followers, looked at the ratio between followers and following. I don't know if we want to mess with Jube Jube. Jube Jube has her own army. She does. She, she's actually got her own business as well. Uh, that's something that that I thought was kind of interesting was that not only does she have, you know, Jube Jube and friends, but, but I mean, she has her own business. Uh, you know, I don't so want... if you look at the stats I just provided, just to, to clarify them, she has almost twice as many followers as MCC on Instagram. She has thousands more likes in the last 10 posts. There were only two out of the 10 that had more likes and one of them were like four or five because we live in this world of likes now. okay we live in this world of likes so just i don't know do we want these armies going to war or do we want these armies figuring out how the community can benefit from a bad situation that don't we all benefit if we can find resolution here How do we find resolution? Number one, how you handle your accusations. Number two, attacking people, whether they're right or wrong, it's never gonna help because the bigger you are, the more you're gonna have accusations. And guess what? One day they just may be right. And we never know how we're, we're in this world of mental health issues. We just never know how somebody is going to respond to this mob mentality. I know I never want to be on the other side of somebody. And I've had differences with people that I know have mental issues. And I'm kind of tactful and strategic where I don't want them to have some sort of negative, adverse reaction to something. I, I don't want to ever be a part of that. Ram says, are we really comparing likes and friends? I can go by thousands right now and have a huge <laughs> following. That's how Travis Scott got famous. We are, we are because that's exactly the argument that was made by MJ. So yes, we are comparing them. That's exactly what we're doing, okay? And you can you can tell. So so even though you've got you know plenty of likes and, and stuff like that, the consistent engagement. There's plenty of sites out there and tools that you can go check out Social Blade and all that other stuff. Like it's it's. It, that, I mean, that's that's not a very good argument that you can just. So, buy so so mutation creation says Elijah knows what is going on. He spoke with Kayla. I believe good things will come from this, and I think that's what everybody wants. Okay, I believe what everyone wants is for good something good to come out. Right? Let's make lemonade. How do we make lemonade? I knew someone was going to talk about it. In fairness, MCC had doubled that before losing their account. Billy, you're here. How do I know that you didn't buy all those followers? <laughs> It's been a year. It's been a year and you're not even at half what you had, right? So how do I know atypical if those weren't bought? Only 15,000 of the 50,000 have come back in a year. And Instagram has a process, guys, for you to get your page back if it was erroneously taken down, just for the record. So I'm going to leave, we're going to leave this Elijah with Billy's statement. And, and, and I'm looking forward to the follow-up on this i'm looking forward to the follow-up on it yeah i think so and it, it's always going to be one of those uh what's what's the phrase there's there's uh you know uh my side your side and then the third part where of what actually happened right you got so, the truth you got my truth your truth and the truth is in the middle 
I mean, right, right. So, so I'm sure that's going to be one of those situations that we're going to find here. And you know, the reason that you know, I, I don't. I'm sure somebody out there is already saying, well, you know, this guy's just trying to get involved in, in everything. But it's it's one of those things where where we we see the exact same thing happen over and over. And MJ well, you're, actually becoming the Nido virus guy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not really what what I wanted. Actually, um, I would gladly give that title down to Pac or. Or, I mean, really, who, the people that it belongs to would probably be Dr. Susan and Pia um, because they are they are the experts. You know, I can I can always repeat what I what I've learned, um, but they, they're they actually working with this stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, all the, the UF researchers, Dr. Robert Ossoboff, um, you know, Stephen Tillis does some work with this stuff. Um, there's, you know, again, Cody and Pia do the Reptile Preservation Institute. They can probably tell us a lot of great stuff. Dr. Dr. Zach Lofman. Uh, worked with through a whole outbreak with crypto. All of those people, I would much rather give the title over to. But, uh, you know, the things that they're not dealing with is that, you know, I mean, a, a perfect example is I, I, I listed that video on uh, on Facebook and, uh, you know, one of the larger ball python groups and the uh, moderators instantly, you know, uh, shadow bandit. Right. So so they're not going to let uh, somebody speak up regardless. There's no way they watched the video in the time that it took them to go ahead and, and, and knock it down. Right. And, and that kind of stuff is, is, is like, you know, the, everybody says they don't want drama. They don't want to deal with drama, but in the case of, of what MJ did, MJ put himself right in the middle, you know? So, so that's uh, not a good place for MJ to be um, not a good place for any of us to be, you know, it's, it's really one of those things where as Billy says, you know, Kayla and, and, and he can work this out and uh, find out, you know, what, what the best next steps are. And I think we'll be in a better place, you know, if, if, if there's something that, that can be done with mutation creation in Guelph, in Guelph, however, mispronouncing. Now you just messed me up. I thought we had this down, Pat. I, I thought I, I, th I thought so, too. I messed up. Uh, uh, we mentioned uh, Lord Lion. Um, I messed up his name all, all through my video. I'm so sorry that I messed his name up. I always say Lord Delian and stuff like that. And the sad thing is, is that uh, they call Lord Elion Eli. That's my name. <laughs> I can't even I didn't even know my own name. All right. So so again, look, I, I'm in full agreement. I'm hoping something good. Like I said, guys, this show is not to seek controversy. It is to discuss the good, the bad, and the ugly. And um we we have so many issues and and we need as much unification in this community as possible, right? That's what community is. And one of the things that I will say about MCC is, I mean, I've seen them promote and push US ARC uh, more than many Americans. And I've told you guys all the time, all the time. same thing with Jason, uh, my co-host on Friday night, where it's sad to see other countries and, and, and reptile keepers and breeders from other countries um, spreading more awareness and doing more for our community than we do. So divide and conquer will always be a number one strategy um, in the art of war. So I think that that we need to, to remember, we need to figure out how to be unified when we're facing so many issues and we have so much adversity being reptile keepers with the laws and everything. So I think that the follow-up, and Billy, I'm going to hold you to that. I'm going to hold you to that. And people are going to hold you to that because you have more to lose than everyone else. Okay. So we're going to hold you to something good coming from this. All right. Something good. And again, guys, Jube Jube and, and uh, or Kayla, who's uh, the Jube Jube thing. I don't agree with everything the person does. There's a lot of A to B. So what do we learn from this? How do we take away the, the, the what ifs? Right. And, and make things more definitive. And one of the things we discussed, having some processes in place. If if you're going to have an issue, I'm going to be honest, if I had thousands of animals um, and you came to me weeks to months afterwards and said there was an issue with the animal, I have a lot of questions. All right. So if you're if you're really going to be for the advancement of this community and we're going to figure out ways to unify and protect each other. We have to do, we have to do things sooner. Okay. Um, Elijah, I want to thank you for joining, for joining us today. Uh, big shout out to forward motion for the super sticker. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate that. That buys me a cup of coffee. Um, 
and I'm sure we will be meeting again. Thank you again for taking this on, on short notice and let's see what happens. If uh, he's flip flopped on many topics before he's done it within one show. So hopefully MJ will be uh, flip flopping on a good note this time. And, and we'll see what we get out of this. The rest of you guys, it's hump day. Check your goals, keep moving forward and have a great week, everybody. I appreciate you all for joining us today.